Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently, we are in Psalms 79. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, let's let me say, keep in mind that um, these are songs. In other words, um, if I was a, a musician and could sing. Uh, probably the best way to represent this would be in Hebrew song, Hebrew style song. But since I can't, we're going to read them. But just keep that in mind that these are actual songs. So now another thing is, um, while David is expressing himself or the psalmist, the psalmist is expressing themselves, God, these are also inspired Songs. In other words, these were given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and in, contained in many of the songs are prophecies, words of wisdom. Um, so all of that kind of um, collides here in the Psalms. There are 150 Psalms, and we are about halfway through. So, and, and of course, the Psalms run different lengths. So, uh, we haven't gotten to some of the longer songs, Psalms, that's to come. The longest Psalm itself would be Psalm 119. And I think the shortest Psalm, I forget which one it is. So, but here we go. Psalm 79. Right, it says, God, the nations have invaded your inheritance, desecrated your holy temple, and turned Jerusalem into ruins. Now, this psalm here is very interesting um, in the sense of who is the one um, who, who is right. The time frame of this seems to be possibly a post-Babylonian um, exile. If you remember, God had been warning Israel to turn from their ways. They did not. And so as a result, um, Nebuchadnezzar was raised up by God to um, <clears throat> really desecrate Israel. This was one of the, they were, it, they were taken out of the land for 70 years. So this seems like, he, this is what he's referring to, during David's time, there was no invasion. The, the, the nation was not conquered. So this is why when he says right here, God, the nations have invaded your inheritance, desecrated your holy temple, and turned Jerusalem into a ruin. So that speaks of actually doing Jeremiah's time. I'm not saying Jeremiah wrote this psalm, but this certainly would, would, would kind of be the time frame here. Jeremiah the prophet himself was, he, it, some people call him to the weeping prophet. Um, but weeping prophet without really kind of understanding the context, if you want to, you know, attach that title to him. Uh, the reason why he is referred to that is because during his lifetime, he comes on the scene about 20 years as a prophet. He comes on the scene about 20 years before the Babylonian <coughs> invasion. And then his lifetime is spent through that horrible uh, time as he sees the death of the nation, the, 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 the conquering, the brutality. So, like I say, I'm not saying that he wrote this psalm, but this seems to be the, 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 what's going on with this time frame here. Now, um, in fact, that he says that Jerusalem, that the temple, the desecrated your holy temple. Now, this also could be... Uh, Times after David as well, because they were uh, there were times when they would they were defeated in war, and people did desecrate the temple, took some of the treasures from the temple. All right, 
verse 2, they gave the corpse of your servant to the birds of the, of the sky for food, the flesh of your godly ones to the beasts of the earth. They poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. So this again, I'm leaning towards, this is right around the Babylonian uh, invasion that was, by the way, that was brought up, brought about by God because of Israel's many sins. Verse 4, we have become an object of reproach to our neighbors, a source of mockery and ridicule to those around us. How long, Yahweh, will you be angry forever? Will, you, will your jealousy keep burning like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't acknowledge you on the kingdoms that don't call on your name. Now, it's kind of interesting, verse 6 here. Um, the pro when you read the prophecies um, of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, um, God says just that. He is going to turn around. He, he, he used Babylon to judge Israel, and then he prophesied that he was going to turn around <laughs> and judge Babylon for their cruelty. And their wickedness. So, in other words, this is going to happen. It just won't happen for another, about another 70 years. Verse 7 For they have devoured Jacob, devastated his homeland. Do not hold past sins against us. Actually, it wasn't the present sins were just as bad. Doing, we, when you read Jeremiah, and we're going to get there soon enough, but Jeremiah was very. One of the things that would happen is that. As Nebuchadnezzar was closing in, Israel still didn't repent, even though they were one of the, at the at the time the king secretly sought Jeremiah and go, what should we do? And Jeremiah said, here's the word of the Lord, you know, surrender and it will go well with you. They rebelled. Uh, <clears throat> do not hold past sins against us. Let your compassion come to us quickly. For we have become weak. God of our salvation, help us. For the glory of your name, deliver us and atone for our sins because of your names. Now, it's kind of interesting, too, that this psalm gives a perspective of kind of, you, you know, on the ground, you know, boots on the ground as these things were happening. So from their perspective, as they're looking, you know, he's crying out, wondering, God, where are you? even though God had been telling them through the prophets that this judgment was coming. Verse 10, why should the nations ask, where is their God? Before our eyes, let vengeance for the, um, for the shed blood of your servants be known among the nations. Let the groan of prisoners reach you according to your great power. Preserve those condemned to die. Pay back sevenfold to our neighbors the reproach they have hurled at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will thank you forever. Actually, they won't. <laughs> um, the reason I say that is because as we speak, Israel is out of covenant relationship with God. Anyway, so he says, we will thank you forever, and we will declare your praise to the generations after generations. Really, they won't. That is still yet to come. Psalm 80 Listen, shepherd of Israel, who leads Joseph like a flock, who sits enthroned on the cherubims, rise up. Now, notice he uses the term cherubims. Cherubims are one of the higher heavenly creatures. Not all heavenly creatures are angels. There are different classifications of heavenly creatures. Cherubim is one of them, and, it, and they're one of the highest orders. Then you have archangels. In fact, angels really are messengers, okay? And whenever you kind of see angel, you always see the, a message, that that heavenly being is bringing a message. Gabriel comes to mind. Verse 2, before Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, rally your powers and come to save us. Restore us, God. Look upon us with favor, and we will be saved. Uh, Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You... You fed them with the bread of tears and gave them the full measure of tears to drink. You make us quarrel with our neighbors. Our enemies make fun of us. Restore us, God of 
of hosts, look on us with favor, and we will be saved. You uprooted the, a vine from Egypt and drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared a place for it. It took root and filled the land. Now, this imagery, I want you to file this for when you read the gospel, because Jesus used this kind of imagery to talk about his being there three years. In one of the parables he tells, he says, um, um, for three years, you know, the the the, the 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 owner of the vineyard was looking for fruit and then it said it didn't find any and so uh, the decree came tear it down but then the servant said no 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 tell you what let me dig around it this year okay and if it bears fruit well and if it doesn't you can tear it down my point is here is again the con continuity of when god uses analogy how it is meant uh, how it is meant. Okay. Okay. Verse 9. You cleared a place for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shade. And the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out sprout towards the sea. Shoots towards the river. Now, again, Jesus talked about this in, in Mark 4. I think Matthew 15. 14. I think 14. Where he talks about the sower who sows the word and the parables of how the kingdom of God is sown. He uses this same imagery here. Um, verse 12. Why have you broken down its walls so, so that all who pass by, by uh, pick its fruit? The boar from the forest tear, tears it and the creatures in the fields feed on it. Return, God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, the root your right hand has planted the shoots that you made strong for yourself. It was cut down and burned up. They perished at the rebuke of your continent. Let your hand be with the man at your right hand with the son of man. You have made strong for yourself. Then let me go back and read that again. Oh, two, 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 verse 16. It was cut down and burned up. They perished at the rebuke of your continents. Let your hand be with the man at your right hand with the son of man. Uh, I, I wanted to kind of read that again because the term son of man, Jesus referred to himself as the son of man. And then notice he said, let your hand be with the man at your right hand. The right hand was always a place of power. It was always a place of privilege and power. And of course, the, the image here is of Jesus, the Son of God. Verse 18, then we, will, then we will not turn away from you. Receive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Yahweh, the God of hosts. Look on us with favor, and we will be saved. Okay. Now, it's kind of interesting, the term save here is not salvation from sin, but salvation from the enemies. Okay. Uh, Psalm 81 Sing for joy to, to God our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Lift up a song. Play the tamarine uh, and um, malicious, uh, mm, melodicious lie. Forgive me for mispronouncing that. Pronouncing that. Um, and the harp. Now, I can't help but just make one statement about some of our brethren who say that... Uh, um, that, uh, um, um, what is that? Psalm that, um, we, we can't, we, God doesn't want us to make have instruments. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, let me go on three, uh, blow the horn on the day of our feast during the new moon, during the full, full moon, for this is the statue for Israel. In a judgment for the God of Jacob, he set up as an ordinance for ja uh, for Jacob when he went through the land of Egypt. I heard an unfamiliar language. I relieve I relieve his shoulder from his burden. His hands were free from carrying the baskets. You called out in distress, and I rescued you. I answered you from the uh, thunder cloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Listen, my people. 
and I would admonish you, Israel, if you would only listen to me, there must, there must not be a strange God among you. You must not blow uh, a foreign God. I am, Yah I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to me. Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own plans. If only my people would listen to me and Israel would follow my ways, I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would pretend submission to him. Those doom, their doom would last forever. But he would feed Israel with the best wheat. I would satisfy you with honey from the rock. All right. Also, music and then, okay. All right. All right. Psalm 82. Psalm 82, God has taken his place in the divine assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Provide justice for the needy and the fatherless. Uphold the right and uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and needy. Save them from the power of the wicked. I'm amazed <coughs> at how our evangelical present evangelical brethren ignore this verse of scripture here in favor of their conservative values okay um verse five they do not understand they wander in darkness all the foundation of the earth is shaken i said you are gods you are all sons of the most high however you would die like men and fall like any other ruler rise up god judge the earth for all of the nations belong to you now um <laughs> this scripture has been twisted jesus quoted this passage to the pharisees now in our modern times there have been prosperity teachers word of faith teachers that use this uh to fit their twisted narrative and one of the things they said that you are god and then thus came out of the theology of the word of faith that we were little gods and you have to get deeper into why they were saying this because they were promoting the word of faith theory in, um, in which we have ultimate faith if we have enough faith we can create our own realities if we um, if we uh, we could we could control the weather. Yes, they actually teach this. Now I know this to be true because I was saved in the Word of Faith movement, and I was there front and center under the church of one of the pillars of the Word of Faith movement, and this is exactly what they taught. And so therefore, they basically said that God, because we are sons of God. That if you have enough faith, we can have the same kind of faith as God and Jesus. So Mark 11, 23 and 24 was their foundational verse of scripture. And that we could have the same kind of faith as Jesus. That means we can speak to the weather. We can speak to sickness. We can create our own realities. Now, I say, so this is one of the verses that they use, that you are little gods. Now, while their version of it, I consider harmless. A lot of people lost their minds over it. Um, because in the sense that um, anyone who believed that they were the little God, okay, fine. Um, the people that was teaching that they control the weather, trust me, they got weather reports before they took off in their, their jets. That's my point. Um, one of the pillars, the guy that I got saved on, passed away. Um, now I think we're going on we're going in the, the the year just I think we've just passed the, the year mark. He was supposed to live to 120. He kept speaking that into existence, but he passed away at uh, just right before his 90th birthday. So okay, 
All right, so um, uh, we are not going to have time to get into Psalm 38. So let's come out of this. All right, guys, we'll pick it up in Psalm 83 in our next study. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to PP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought, a comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I'll see you in the next study.